Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. My name is Bobby and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. pulled out this new Miltoniopsis and there's some stuff going on that I just don't like and I told you guys before it wasn't going to be long lived in this pot and it's because it's in pure sphagnum moss I have nothing but issues so I've already got a little bit of looks like a little bit of rot or something going on here and the roots that are visible some of them are dying off some of them are still okay and if I peel some of these sheaths back around the new growth, uh, wherever it's at, I can see that the sheaths are kind of rotting, but new roots are just starting to poke out. So the time is now. It is a good time, I guess, to try to get this out of this pot and figure out what's going to happen with it. I do not know what I'm going to do with this plant. I really do not. So here we go. I'm going to start by taking this wire off and we're going to go from there. I should just lift right off. Keyword should. And that way we can much easier work on this plant. So, we've got roots that are coming out of the basket and back in. We're going to gently try to tease those roots out. Some of them are already dying. It's going to make it easier to get this plant out of the pot. That should be good enough. And then, um, rather than just pulling and tugging, I am a little bit worried about this plant, so I need to go get my tools real quick, and I will be right back and we will extract this from this basket. All right, so we're back. We're gonna spray down our tools with alcohol to get everything going. And we should transfer anything from the last three pot over. And I'm gonna take these tweezers and I'm just gonna start gently kind of prying the sides of this moss away from the edges of the basket try to get a feel for how well this thing is uh, attached. Not as bad as I thought so far. And I am happy because I do see growing root tips. So that is good. And it's a branching root system, so that's even better. Alright, we have it out. Now, I do see root tips, so I'm going to be, want to be really careful. But I'm going to go ahead and get all this moss off this root ball. We're going to go ahead and see what we're looking at. So, I've got the plant out of the pot, and I was cleaning up the roots, and I, I did go ahead and pull off this old leafless bulb because it's just ready. It was buried down in the pot, and I don't trust it. I think that is the root of the problem. I see the next root, the next growth up had a bunch of algae grown into it. That's this nasty leaf right here. And that's where I stopped. That's where I'm going to bring you guys back into this cleanup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to probe around, get any last little bit of moss out of this root system. But I can say root system because it does have pretty decent roots. There's some dead ones in the middle. This old bulb had the cluster of dead ones that was in the dead center of this plant. But it is seemingly producing some new roots with this growth 
and should push more on with this new one coming in here very soon. So this is definitely the time to do this. So I'm going to keep picking around and getting this last little bit of moss out and pluck off these last bit of dead roots here in the central portion. But I did want to bring you back now so I can show you that process. The tedious stuff is over. So we do have, I mean, there's even some valid roots in there, honestly. So I'm going to pull a little bit at some of these, see if the outer skin comes off or they break. Yeah, they're brittle. They're, they're dead. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off this portion. Expected. And this is where the curved scissors really, really come in handy. Alright, so we're down to the bare bones of this thing, and the next step, oh gosh, there's still a little bit suspended in here. I've probably still got a few roots I could use to trim, but I want to get this thing sprayed. It's going to make life a little bit easier detangling things and getting this last little bit of moss out of this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just spray it right now with clean water. I've got the jet on and I'm going to really focus on the underside of that there where that last little bit of moss likes to linger in between the base of the roots. And that's where you'll really mess yourself up. That's where the new roots come out. And you don't want to do anything to disturb that, especially not on this kind of plant. I've already kind of done a lot of disturbing, but I'm trying very hard to preserve everything that I can. So as you see, a lot of that moss that was deep down in there has been loosened up. And it's easy to get out of there now, relatively speaking at least. If you have the tools, use them. Your fingertips are 99% of the time what's going to break something. <laughs> Trust me. From experience, I can tell you that right now. So if you have any kind of tweezers that you can use or any tools to get in there that are skinnier than your fingers, that are gentle on the plant, I highly, highly recommend using it. Again, I use the uh, aquascaping scissors and aquascaping tweezers because they're very fine, they're, they're made for working with plants. Underwater plants, but I find that they really do cross over quite well to the orchid world. Alrighty, so we're almost there. There's definitely some more roots that need to get trimmed off, so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that. I'm gonna get this the rest of the way cleaned up. I will be back with you guys in just a few moments with our beautiful cleaned up Miltoniopsis and we'll discuss what I think is going on with some of this because this was not there when I got it. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell or not already, but we've done quite a hack job on this plant. I took another bulb off. It really wasn't doing much. As you can see, these are the only roots that are valid on it. One root that branched. And it's got the same brown markings on it and on the leaves. It's just not right. So I took it off. There was an aborted spike. There was an aborted growth all in the sheath that has also got the same algae and the same brown markings on it. These leaves are starting to get something going on. So. That's the main reason I jumped right on this. I've had this for about a week, and I told you guys when I got it that it had to come out of this as soon as possible. So what we've kept is one strong bulb. It has some accordion leaves, but no markings on them. Um, and this, this bulb has one strong new growth and one that's just starting. So I may actually remove this leaf. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. That way, once this growth here decides to spit out roots, it's going to go directly down and into the media and hopefully be happy. So we have some roots on this. 
valid roots, it's nice, and some that are just starting, just coming on, fresh growing tips. So I do have hope for this plant, but I still don't quite know what I'm going to do with it. But before we do anything else, because of this issue right here, I'm going to go ahead and spray this plant down with Fizen, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to go ahead and take this to the sink and do that, and I will be right back. And we will hopefully figure out what we're going to do with this orchid. Okay, so I've got the Miltoniopsis all cleaned up, and like I said, we're down to one bulb with the two new growths on it. But I'm happy with that right now because they are the healthiest parts of this plant by far. So I've got it down. I did separate the rhizome. So what we're going to do first and foremost is clean that up with a little bit of cinnamon. This plant was already exhibiting some problems of fungal rot or something like that, bacterial rot, and we do not want that to go any farther. So that will be the first thing that we do. And spill some in. So if you haven't already caught on, this plant is going to go on a mount. And I know that's crazy because it's a Miltoniopsis, but that is just what we do here at Cloud Force Vibes. So I'm going to get this plant situated in a manner that allows these new growths to spit their roots out down onto the mount and hopefully progress this plant up the mount in a way that will be manageable. And I have just the mount for it, a big gnarly one, one that I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to use. So I think this is the plant, I really do. I think it's going to be a good fit. I want to locate it about centrally. That's going to give plenty of room for growth, but also plenty of room for the roots to spread out and be happy and stay nice and hydrated with a very, very nice chunk of sphagnum moss around it. So I've got my line tied onto my mount, and again, I'm going to situate this orchid centrally, and I'm going to strap it onto this mount first because I'm hoping that if the roots branch, they will go ahead and take very, very quickly. And the ones that are already pushing out, I'm, hope, I'm hoping will take right away. So, that. Should be about good. We're going to go ahead and try to get this thing on here. This is going to be a tough one. So I'm coming around the base of the rhizome first. That is not going to cut it. Pin this cluster of roots down here at the base. same to the lower section down here. And I'll do the same at the top. And then pin the roots to the mount. because we don't have any other bulbs to do that with at this time. That's going to be the one that really supports this plant. So. We're going to start by taking our moss. This is bone dry at the moment, but that will change very soon. We're going to take loose clusters of it we're just going to start to pack it in around these roots. I'm not going to be shy to add 
extra marks on this mount. That section's nice and covered. <coughs> so we're gonna do some more wraps, get everything fastened on there. And, uh, I have shorted myself with line. on unfortunately. Oh, I hate when I do this. Oh, no, I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> Damn it. Alright. Well, we're gonna get this tied off. I'm gonna get another piece tied on and we'll be back when I get this thing finished because I'm struggling again. Okay, so I've got the moss on here a lot better. I had to tie an extra line on but what we're going to do with this plant, because it's going to be living in the tent, is we're going to give it a little bit of live moss, but we're going to give it the forest moss. As you can see, I don't know if you can tell or not from that angle, but this has grown on quite nicely. So we're going to top it, we're going to take some of these clippings, and we're going to spread it around on this bag of moss, and we're going to let it just kind of take over this mount. I think it's going to look really, really nice over time. So. Another thing that these curved scissors come in really handy for is getting in these, this is actually what it's made for, getting in this low-lying stuff and cutting it clean and getting it level or close to it with your substrate. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're just going to mow the lawn. If any of you wonder, most of this moss is badge moss. There's some thread moss and some fern, no sorry, thread moss in here as well and maybe another species or two but the two prominent ones are thread moss and badge moss and I did source this locally in the forest for my terrarium that you guys may or may not have seen in a previous video but it's a really hardy moss. It is um, I guess what you'd call deciduous or temperate. It's not tropical, but I do think it's going to survive really well. This this tray grows in the tent, so I already know it will do well in that environment. And we're just going to take a little bit more. I don't want to take too much. should do it. That'll be plenty to get it going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take what we've clipped and I'm just going to kind of spread it out mostly along the bottom part here because it will grow up I'm sure of that. help this moss establish really quickly and hopefully make this mount look really natural. Alright so I think that is enough. Again it's going to spread and once it gets established if we really need to we can pluck it and poke it up here in the top section but I really am focused now more on this lower section because that's where we want it. We want it to grow up 
grow naturally. So with our final few wraps of line, I'm just going to go ahead and go around this bottom section real good and secure this moss on because it is clippings. It will fall right off if we do not do so. And this is my first mount with this forest moss and I'm really excited. I really love the way it looks. I think it looks more natural even than the sphagnum and hopefully it's more manageable because the live sphagnum moss can be really troublesome sometimes. It really does grow wild. <laughs> this is a lot more low-lying and I think I think over time it'll be a lot better for the orchid and the mount than the live sphagnum, at least in a tent. So that is our last wrap. Go ahead and get this thing tied off, and I'll meet you guys in the grow room, and we'll take a close look at this plant now that it's on its new mount. So before we take a closer look, we are going to do this. We are going to soak this plant down real good. This moss is absolutely crispy dry, and we need it to be moist at all times, being that this is a milkoniosis. It's also going to give us a chance to take a look at things and make sure that none of this zombie moss is crowding the plant or going to cause issues with drippage into areas that shouldn't be when we're watering this. It never ceases to amaze me that no matter how moist loving the plant is, how water intolerant a lot of them can be. And uh, Miltoniopsis, I'm sure, are another testament to that. They want to be moist, but if they're kept wet, or any version of wet, I'm sure they'll go downhill fast. So it's going to be a delicate balance. Just like Nasibalias or Draculas or anything else, it comes from the same type of climate that these plants come from. happy I got this out of that basket. I really do think it's going to flourish and do a lot better in my environment on a mount. I know that sounds crazy, but I really do think it'll do well. As long as it lives through this. <laughs> so, I do have some cow mag here. And I'm going to go ahead and get a cow mag. And I do believe uh, there is a little bit of kelp mixed into this. We're just going to soak it down, let it drip out, and I will be back to show you guys where it ends up. So I've got the finished product here back pretty much right where it was. It does project out quite a bit further. I don't think it's going to be a problem. And the Pentheus usually hangs here, but there is some space now. But it will provide really good shade for this plant. So I think we're going to be successful. If not, I can always move it back. And I know it sounds crazy, but get it a little bit more light if I move it back there. Um, that way the other plants filter it instead of the Pentheus. And it, it should be okay where it's at. But that's the Miltoniopsis vexillaria, and that is its new mount, and hopefully it stays happy. You guys, you know we'll follow the progress of this plant together, and we're just going to see. I'm so excited about it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed. Please continue to stay safe, and until next time, happy growing.